Hey guys, uh, Daniel here from The Dog Tail, and today we've got a ton of open farm dog food products that we're going to unbox and take a look at. But first, a little bit about the company. So, Open Farm is all about uh, providing your pet with better nutrition, first and foremost, uh, and then second of all, ethically sourcing the ingredients they, they use to do that. So, how does Open Farm provide your pet with better nutrition? Well, you're going to see it right away when you look at their ingredients list. Uh, you're going to see, first of all, in every single recipe you give them, a whole meat is the first ingredient. And then you're going to see a list of often pretty nutrient-rich organ meats, um, organic produce like carrots and kale and kelp, as well as some fruits uh, and some super foods and vitamins and minerals like turmeric and chia seeds and, and, and stuff like that. What you're not going to see is lots of you know beef meal and and lamb meal and stuff like that which is usually made from like the carcasses of sometimes rotting animals and it's really not great for your pet um, and you're also not going to see uh, fillers especially even like high quality fillers like potatoes are an okay filler for your dog as well as are legumes but uh, they're not necessarily uh, the most efficient way to give your pet nutrition so they've cut those out and instead they rely on, on higher value produce to, to meet those needs. Now, how does Open Farm do this ethically? Well, they've partnered with Certified Humane and the Global Animal Partnership to ensure that the animals and the other ingredients that they use in their food are produced sustainably. So you're not gonna find any GMO products in their food and also any animals that are used to go into the food like chicken, turkey, beef, lamb, all of it is uh, bred without uh, added growth hormones or antibiotics, and they're all cage-free, pasture-fed, grass-fed um, animals that are uh, raised by farms that are regularly audited to ensure that they meet these standards. And while this is great for those animals, your pet and the environment, it's also a great way to support these family farms. So first we're gonna look at their gently cooked fresh food. So this food is, is pre-cooked and then frozen and shipped over dry ice. And so you'll receive it to your doorstep, it'll still be cold. And even if you're not home right away when you get it, it it'll stay frozen for a few hours and you can put it, uh, the food that you're gonna use the next day, you can stick it in your fridge. And the food that you're not gonna use quite yet, you just put in the freezer. So it comes, there's dry ice in here and it's shipped inside this box. And here's what the food looks like. It's portioned into these 16 ounce packs. And if you look at the back, you can see, so this is this is the turkey recipe. And I can see like the green is kale and there's some pieces of carrot in there. Um, so you can actually see the real ingredients. But uh, we got the beef recipe and the turkey recipe. And just looking at the ingredients list here. So turkey, kale, carrots, apples, butternut squash, pumpkin, uh, like all, you know, things that you would actually eat. Um, and looking farther down the list, you see some stuff like chia seeds, chicory root, um, coconut oil, all of this stuff is uh, providing essential minerals and vitamins and fatty acids to your dog that they need to like look and feel healthy. And on the pack, there's a little feeding guide. So it says if, you do if your dog is 10 pounds, they'd eat seven ounces per day. Uh, if they're 30 pounds, 15 ounces and, and you can get further guidance on their website, I believe. Um, but basically, that'll just help you calculate how much your dog should eat. You also are welcome to, uh, you know your pet better than anyone, so you know how much they typically eat and need. Also, you might wanna work with your vet to make sure they're getting an appropriate amount. Um, you'll also want to take into account if you, if, does that taste good, buddy? If you are combining the gently cooked food with, uh, as a supplement to some other diet, like their kibble, um, you'll want to, you know, take that into account as well. But this is one area where Open Farm is a little bit different from a lot of the fresh food subscriptions out there, is that all the food is basically pre-portioned into these set amounts. Um, so you're not necessarily going to get a specific amount just for your pet. You you just order it in, in these preset boxes, and then you can divide it however you want based on your pet's needs. So a couple things I want to reiterate about fresh food. Uh, first of all, fresh food is from any company is going to be more expensive than kibble. And the reason is uh, the process that goes into creating kibble is 
more efficient for delivering a set of calories, but it also, uh, which, which is why it's cheaper, but that whole process also destroys a lot of the original nutrition that's in the ingredients. So a fresh diet is going to be like, it's, it's all human grade ingredients. So you could eat this if you really wanted to. Um, and honestly, it wouldn't be like, it doesn't smell like, do I hate the smell of dog food usually. Uh, we feed Hobbs fresh food and it, and it, uh, like I could eat it. I don't, <laughs> um, that would be a little weird, but it's completely normal food. Um, the other thing about it is you're not gonna get any artificial preservatives. You're not gonna get artificial fillers. Um, it's not meant to last for three years on a supermarket shelf. Um, and that's why it's so good for your pet. And although it's more expensive, over the long run, uh, it should have a pretty profound effect on your pet's health, which could not only increase the length of their life, but also cut down on uh, developmental health issues and uh, vet bills down the road. One other thing is Open Farm has taken every step to make this whole shipping process as sustainable as possible. So the cardboard uh, is curbside recyclable, as is the plastic that goes around the insulation. Uh, then there's the uh, actual, like you see this uh, insulating material here. This is water soluble, so you can just dissolve it in the sink if you want, or if you compost, you can stick it in your compost pile and it'll, it, it's compostable. Uh, and then the dry ice will just melt itself. You should, it might take about uh, 12, 24 hours. You should just stick it outside somewhere where a kid or a pet's not gonna get to it. Um, and then the plastic packaging on the food packs are also recyclable through, uh, Open Farm has a partnership with TerraCycle. So all you need to do is you need to rinse the packs. And then once you have 30 of them, you can ship them in for free with like a pre-paid label. Um, and that way, if, if sustainability and recycling is your priority, you can literally everything here, it can be recycled. Um, and this is one area where Open Farm really does a good job. Some other fresh uh, pet food subscriptions, uh, the packaging for the food itself isn't recyclable either because they've got easy peel seals or um, because they just use a different type of plastic. Uh, so it's really cool that they took that extra step here to do that. Next, we're gonna look at some of Open Farm's other products. So they have a wide range of, of stuff, especially for dogs. They also have some stuff for cats. Uh, we didn't get everything in their catalog because it's just, there's a ton of stuff you can order, um, but they have the gently cooked food we just looked at. They also have like wet food stews. Um, they also have freeze dried raw food. They have traditional kibble. They have uh, bone broths, which can kind of be used as a topper. And they have kefir, kefir um, which if you're not familiar with that, it's used, in a, it's used in a lot of like Mediterranean and Middle Eastern human diets, but it's basically like a yogurty dairy type drink uh, that is loaded with prebiotics and stuff like that that's good for the gut. Um, so we're going to take a look at a few of those items right now. So let's take a look. The first thing you're going to get is this uh, little welcome guide and it's basically just going to explain um, some of their partnerships they've made to be more sustainable, um, to prevent overfishing and to prevent um, inhumane environments for some of the cattle that goes into their products and stuff like that. Um, it also explains how to track, so you can actually track all of the ingredients that go into your pet's food on their website um, because transparency is basically a, a big goal for them. The, the food industry in general, especially the pet food industry, is not very transparent, so that's really cool that you can kind of keep them accountable. Um, it explains their partnership with TerraCycle, you get a, a discount code for your next order, a transition guide, um, and a little more information about their other products. So that's uh, that's cool. And this, we got their freeze-dried raw food. So if your pet is on a raw diet, um, you're gonna wanna keep them on a raw diet. Raw diets uh, are thought to be a little bit more nutritious because the cooking, anytime you cook any food, some of the nutritional value is going to be eliminated. That said, um, it's not something to just jump into gung-ho. You need to carefully transition your pet into raw food, and there's a, a ton more you can read about that online. But if your pet is on a, a raw diet and you want the convenience of what people who feed their pets kibble have, this is an excellent idea um, because it's shelf-stable. Um, you can use it as like a, a topper to mix into food that you might provide raw. Um, 
or you can feed them just this and that's that's fine as well. You can see it's there's kind of these big, uh, like it's bigger than typical kibble. It's also lighter um, since it's freeze dried. So it's gonna have this like airy or crunchy texture. And the standards for, even though it's raw, the standards are, are the same um, as far as like how the food is sourced and the farms that it supports and everything like that. Um, looking here, the ingredients are lamb, lamb heart, lamb liver, ground lamb bones. So first of all, whole meat's the first ingredient. And then you've got organ meats, which are going to be really rich in, in nutrients. And then the ground bones, which is really important for uh, pets to get the minerals from bones. That's, that's something that they would have in their typical diet in the wild. So that's good for them. And then you've got some organic uh, veggies and fruits like car organic carrots, blueberries, sunflower seeds, organic squash, spinach, kale, uh, pumpkin seeds, cranberries, a bunch of good stuff in there looking all down the list. Um, you've got some superfoods like chicory root and dried kelp, uh, organic apple cider vinegar, and then some vitamins and stuff. Really, really good ingredient list. Nothing on here is, is concerning. Um, so if you are considering feeding your dog raw or want to introduce it, this is, is a great option. Um, we also got some of their traditional kibble. So again, like I said before, uh, no matter where you get it, kibble is not going to be as good an option as as fresh food. Um, it's just simply the difference between uh, a human having a diet of fresh cooked, you know, meats and produce versus beef jerky. You know, it's it's not the same. That said, um, kibble is a suitable way to feed your pet. It's nutritionally balanced and. Um, the big thing here is to look at the ingredients that goes into your pet's kibble. Um, if you go look at some of the most common brands on the, sh on the shelves at stores and you look at the ingredient list, um, not only is it kibble, which is probably the most processed form of food you can feed your pet, but it's just packed with all kinds of things they don't need to be eating. It's just mostly fillers and mostly meat meals that are suspicious. So here looking at this list, You've got, so this is the turkey uh, recipe, turkey and chicken, sorry. And you've got turkey and chicken are the first two ingredients. And then you've got ocean whitefish meal. So like I said before, meals aren't ideal. Um, fish meals are less concerning than like cattle meals um, because of just the way fish are consumed. Um, also, it's lower on the list than you typically see for other kibbles. And then you've got rust potatoes, chickpeas, green lentils, field peas, coconut oil, um, a lot of recognizable, real, normal foods, good ingredients you're going to get. If your dog is on a kibble diet uh, and you want to upgrade the kibble, this is a really good option. Um, or if you want to mix your dog's food, you know, 50-50 with kibble and fresh food to basically upgrade their nutrition without breaking the bank, um, this is a great way to, to do it. We also got their New Zealand venison recipe. So this is um, one of the only ingredients that comes from outside the U.S. or, or from North America is their uh, their venison. Um, but it's raised on pasture. The farms in New Zealand are all pasture raised cattle. So it's cattle or livestock. So it's um, humanely raised, and also the the animals that go into it aren't being fed the like, growth hormones and antibiotics that will eventually end up in your pet's bloodstreams. It's all um, very ethically and um, humanely sourced. Uh, so looking here, we've got, um, oh, sorry. So here we've got venison, field peas, ocean white fish meal, sweet potatoes, herring meal, chickpeas, red lentils, green lentils, coconut oil, flaxseed, pumpkin. So um, again, a lot of like pretty quality ingredients that are going to uh, look better than if you look at the back of, not to name brands, but like if you look at the back of your Purina package or something like that, you're gonna see um, a lot more superficial ingredients that kind of fill out the kibble without providing a lot of nutrition. So this is better. Um, venison might also be a good uh, option for pets that have a sensitivity to 
certain meats. So there's a lot of dogs that have beef sensitivities or chicken sensitivities, and you have to look for like an alternate protein source. So venison might be one, or some of their lamb recipes might be a good option for that. And the last thing we got is some of their uh, bone broth. So they have a, a, a few different broth um, options. And I'm sure you've heard about how bone broth is kind of a, a super food for humans. It can be a really great way to get some of the nutrition that's trapped in animal bones into your own diet. Um, and they come in these like squeezy packs that you kind of see uh, sometimes baby food is served in these packs. And um, it's made with, you know, antibiotic free chicken. Um, it's really good for collagen, which is good for their, um, their joints and their tendons. It's, it's very good for that. Um, this can also be good for their coats to help it look good. Um, this is entirely human grade um, and humanely raised. And what the way people typically use this is they'll put a few tablespoons into their pet's uh, kibble at every meal or every day at least. And what it'll do, it'll, it'll provide a little extra nutrition and it'll also help picky eaters because some dogs just grow tired of their kibble eventually and wetting it and adding a little bit of flavor can help, you know, pique their curiosity. So this is a very um, good, healthy way to do that. So this is just some of the products that Open Farm offers. And for each of these products, there are additional recipes um, that you can consider. Uh, and we'll uh, break some of them down in the review below, um, as well as give our thoughts on how Open Farm food really matches up. Um, does it deliver your pet good nutrition? How does it compare to some other brands? Um, keep reading below for more information as well as for some discount links.